on the policy implications, which is the theme of the panel. This actually, I mean, the stability of the wage Phillips curve and the instability of the price Phillips curve has a fairly big implication, which I think hasn't been examined and should probably have been in the context of thinking about what the Fed should do, which is to have a wage inflation target rather than a price inflation target. I mean, it clearly is much more related to labor market development. So from a, just a empirical point of view, it seems like a better measure to actually look at. But from a normative point of view, uh, if you take a new Keynesian model and the markups reflect large distortions, then actually it's a good idea to take a measure which doesn't have the markup in it, namely the wages, and basically focus on this. So if when you see wage inflation at 3%, and you see productivity growth at 1%, then you're home. Even if uh, GDP deflator, in my case, but the CPI or the core uh, CPI moves around. So we had talked at a dinner with Janet, and we said we would write a paper together. Uh, Janet has been a bit busy. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's still worth exploring. Uh, also politically, actually, telling, that, you know, telling people that the Fed cares about wages and has wage inflation as a target is probably a plus in addition. Okay. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos from Brookings.